Hello and welcome. This will be a recording of uh, the uh, Canvas page and the study guide for the course in uh, Applied IoT uh, at the summer of 2023. So let's get started. Um, we do have uh, here behind me a um, the web page and this will be our landing page for the course and this is the canvas page the landing page for the course is accessible even without you logging in um, so uh, this uh, should not be a problem for you to access even without student credentials in order we will open the canvas page for login uh, when uh, the course starts uh, or the days just before but the only thing that will be behind a login will be the handing of the assignment and the quizzes so there is no need to worry about not being able to log in in the very beginning of the course the landing page of the course is good to bookmark so please do that uh, we will use this as the main uh, landing page um, with static information so what you need to do is to uh, obviously hopefully you've already done that but watch the welcome video uh, we want you to read the study guide and i will also go through that uh, in this video you have a link to the discord server uh, you also have a link to the bill of material uh, which you can see here. There are also uh, a couple of other important links. Some are duplicates. You see that the Discord server shows up one more time. But we also have a link to the YouTube playlist where we will put all the video material that is distributed in this course in the same playlist. So you will be able to follow along. You will also find the IoT tutorial template which will be a separate video uh, uh, later on but this will be the base of how you actually uh, make your report you can also find the syllabus of the course uh, and um, if you are interested in that part you will also be able to find the course FAQ which we will update with general questions that is very linked to this particular course. You will also find a GitHub repository where we might push uh, or we will push some material uh, that might be needed during the workshops and such and also additional material. And the GitHub repository is mainly something that we will share code uh, on. One thing that is worth mentioning is that there is a good projects examples for uh, where we have gathered a lot of projects since the previous years. And when I'm recording this video, I have not yet added all the 2022 projects that will come. But in this uh, document, you will be able to go through and see some projects that have been done before, which could start as a inspiration for you when you do your own project that is um, probably um, what's needed from this page now let's go into the study guide which is the main theme of this video you will find this recording also linked in the study guide as a link here uh, but what I do want you to um, think about is to uh, actually read this document carefully as we do have a large number of students in the course. Um, it's essential that uh, the information is as clear as possible. So if there is anything that is unclear about the study guide, I would like to know and we can change the study guide and adapt to and, and explain. Uh, but this is the document that is perhaps one of the most important documents of this course. This is our contract with you as students. 
what to expect and how we grade and uh, etc. So one thing first is to plan your studies. This uh, might sound uh, like something you or, uh, that teachers are always saying to you, but uh, one thing that is worth mentioning in this course is that it will be a quick pace. Uh, it's going to be five weeks and that is including the examination part, which will be the last week. So essentially it will be four weeks of studies. And a lot of this uh, will be covered by workshops and lectures, etc. But the majority of your time will be uh, doing your own project. And this might take some time. And I do speak of experience that there will be uh, quite stressful for some of you in the very end of this course. So please plan accordingly. Uh, try to make sure that you actually plan ahead and look at the, the schedule and uh, try to follow along as much as possible. And ask questions. And I've written this three times just to emphasize that we do like questions. There are actually no questions that are um, stupid and that is also something that you usually say. <laughs> But I would like to emphasize that if there is anything that is unclear, is if there is anything that you think that you don't know, ask it. The Discord server is full of people that are here just to help you. We have an amazing team of teaching assistants uh, and we also have a lot of students in the course. So the next point is answer questions. There will likely be activity in the Discord server almost 24 seven, at least during the most intensive project parts of this course. So please be aware that you should also answer questions. Uh, we want you to be active uh, in order to get this course uh, as a course that is fun and engaging. It all relies upon you. So it's not a course where you just sit and watch some lectures, do a project and then you're fine. Uh, we want you to participate. You wa we want you to be active. So please just go in there and, and enjoy uh, uh, being able to communicate with other people. So participation is encouraged, just to say. So please interact uh, with everyone on the Discord channel. That's all we have. Uh, that's the communication tool that we will use. Everything else will be static information and including this kind of pre-recorded videos. Uh, if you want to comment on those, please take those comments up in, in the Discord server. Uh, and perhaps the most important thing of all is that you should try to have a try to have fun, adopt a positive attitude. We are all from different backgrounds and especially in this course we have seen that there will be people that are very new into the area of IoT and IT as general and we do have a lot of people also that are probably considered to be professionals in this particular area but want to still uh, uh, do a project and uh, and uh, evolve their skills. So we will have a great diversity in backgrounds and competences. So let's try to thrive on that. That is something that I really want to emphasize. Uh, try to share as much information with others as possible. And I would not be surprised that we do have some experts in some area in this course as students, which are uh, way more knowledgeable in some area than than any of the teachers or the TAs and that is uh, absolutely encouraged so and also try to have fun we are all doing this because we think it's worth doing that means that we should make the time uh, valuable and it is valuable if it's fun so try to adopt this positive attitude uh, that doesn't mean that we are up to uh, I would say criticism if there is something that we could do better uh, please we would like to know that as well but try to do it in a positive way uh, everyone uh, really uh, will win uh, uh, in the end from that 
The objective of this course is uh, to build a connected sensor unit that provides some kind of measure value and present it over the internet. And the focus of the course is that it is an introductory course. Uh, it's focused on your learning and interest and uh, you should be able to do the project that you want to do. That means that we don't steer you in any particular direction uh, if you want to build your uh, a, a, a monitoring for your plants or if you want to keep track of your dog or if you just want to do some LEDs and some temperature sensor or a buzzer or whatever. It doesn't really matter. The main objective is quite broad. You should build something upon a microcontroller. It should send something that is measured over the internet. And obviously the presentation could be a lot of different things. We'll probably dive into that later on. But the, the main point here is that the, I, the area of IoT is very broad and we really want you to do your projects which are meaningful and uh, for you. So try to have an, um, an idea of what you like to do. That is very important. The course uh, has a very practical focus. Uh, that means that you are able, you, you, you need to build something. You need to do something. You need to present your project. Uh, that means that you need to uh, get hold of some hardware uh, enabled to finish this course. You will need to do that. You also do this individually. That doesn't mean that you can't work in groups. Absolutely, you can do that, but you do your own project individually. So, and as this is a distance course, uh, I would say that the absolute majority of the students so far has done their projects very individually, but the collaboration has been a really important part where you can share experiences and help it out each other with code and such. Uh, there is actually not a requirement of the exact hardware. We have given a bill of material and what we call the recommended hardware. That means that we recommend in this course the, the Raspberry Pi Pico. And I just emphasize on the Pico part, not the Raspberry Pi, because that's a small computer. The Raspberry Pi Pico, that's the microcontroller. That will be the recommended hardware for this course. But it's fine if you have any other kind of microcontroller. It could be an ESP32, an ESP8266, or any kind of flavor of Arduino, as long as it is connected to the internet. That is the essential part. And it also needs to be a microcontroller. So not a computer, a microcontroller. So if you are unsure, uh, and if you want to do something else, just ask. Uh, there will be plenty of people that can help you out. Uh, we will be using Canvas as the platform for submission and administration. Uh, this platform will mainly be used for static information, such as you see behind me, the study guide. Uh, it will also be the place where we publish the uh, schedule. So you will be able to follow along when we publish the schedule. And there is a possibility of also subscribing to this Canvas schedule as a Google in your Google Calendar or whatever you use using the, um, the, the calendar, calendar feed. And the Discord server is not officially a learning platform you are responsible for your own account on the Discord server and it is not officially linked to your LNU account. So that is why the examination and the hand-ins will take place and the quizzes will take place on the Canvas server. Um, yeah, communication strategy. And this is, um, this is important as this course is quite a big course. And we still want to keep the communication as a, at, a, at a really good uh, level. So when you want to contact any of the, um, if you want to contact me, 
I would like that you do that via email and those things that you contact me about should be things that are about uh, grades or any kind of formal participation or whatever that is absolutely necessary for me to get as a personal message as uh, as an email uh, and i would like to to just reach out to all of you try to keep the emails to an absolute minimum i'll be super glad if i don't get a single email um, obviously you're free to send them to me but try to keep that at at a minimum and that is why what yeah, you can probably understand why, as we do have a couple of hundred students. And if people are emailing me all the time, uh, I won't actually have time to do anything useful with my time. And a lot of questions are best answered in public forums. That is why we do want to keep all discuss discussions, questions about everything in a public channel on the Discord server, because then more people we will be able to answer and also see the question and the answers. Teachers uh, will not accept any friend request at Discord. And this is not us being rude. This is just to maintain the balance of keeping you off the direct message path. Uh, we can absolutely be friends on Discord, but later on in that case, but not during the course. I do not want to have uh, DMs from uh, a lot of students. And that is not because we are rude. It's just because we want to maintain all communication in the public server. Whatever communication that is personal or related to your grades, fine, send them via an email to me and I will answer. So all questions about the course, general questions about assignments, schedule, whatever, ask them at Discord. And you are able to tag me on Discord. So that is the best way to get in contact with me as fast as possible. We will use Discord and um, we will um, so keep, keep um, a notice on uh, the course announcement channel. So Discord will be the main form of communication. We won't utilize email, so keep your eyes on Discord. You will, that's where we're going to post information in the course. So everything uh, that is of a high interest in the course is going to be po posted in the course announcement channel. And it is important that you read everything that is pinned. And I would also want to reach out to all of you that try to respond to all pinned posts. And obviously try to respond to as much as possible. It's super easy for you to just press the like button or whatever emoji you want to use. But this gives an indication for, the, the, for everyone, but especially for me, of how many people that has actually seen and reacted to a message. So this means a lot. I'm just saying it's not that you will fail the course if you don't, but please do. Please try to like as much as possible because it is a good indication of the activity in the course. So, and it doesn't take much time. It's just a press of a button and that's it. And you are able to filter out the, the pinned post by using this little uh, pin symbol uh, as shown here in the picture. So if you want to filter out a channel for the pinned post, uh, you're able to, to do that quite easily. And I want also to mention that there is a really good search function in Discord. So if there is any particular thing that you want, that you're thinking about, try to search uh, in the Discord channel, in the Discord server, and you might actually find uh, an answer even from the previous years uh, that might help you out. We will keep everything in English. Uh, I do know that most of you are probably native English, uh, uh, native uh, Swedish speakers, uh, but try to keep all discussions in English. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we don't want to hear or read Swedish in the server. And that is because it is an international course. Uh, we want to include 
everyone. So whatever you write in Swedish or any other kind of language that is not English will uh, put a barrier uh, for other people to, to, to read in an easy way. So we want to feel uh, everyone should feel included. So please speak English all the time. And this is also during the workshops. Obviously, if you're having a discussion with maybe one or two persons in a workshop, all of you are <laughs> Swedish speakers. Well, obviously, fine. Absolutely, you should switch to Swedish. But if there is any person joining in that doesn't speak Swedish or any other language than English, please switch back to English. Keep that in mind. We want to include everyone. So, and the objectives, and this is according to the syllabus, is that you should, after this course, have a fundamental knowledge of the Internet of Things area. Uh, you should have some basic knowledge of programming microcontrollers. Uh, you should have some, some basic knowledge about sensors and gathering data from sensors. Uh, you will also get some knowledge, a basic knowledge about IoT infrastructure and different message protocols. Uh, we will also uh, have small parts about the data visualization and databases. And uh, most importantly is that you will have a hands-on experience of you yourself developing an IoT project. We will also have a section about 3D printing and we don't require you to buy a 3D printer, but we will do, we will have a, um, some lecture material on 3D printing and uh, we will have a quiz link to that. So you will give an insight, you will have also an insight into the 3D printing world, which is really, really fun as well. And in the right part here, you can see that there are some objectives that are linked to some abbreviations here, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, that is quizzes. And then we have T1, T2, and that's the tutorial. And then P1, P2, that's the presentation. I will go through then you can see here there's an extended presentation extended tutorial basic tutorial etc and that is has to do with the grading level and if we go through the deadlines the course will start on may uh, the 5th of june uh, and it will end on the 9th of july uh, as i said it will be full speed ahead all course task, uh, tasks will need to be fulfilled before the course ends um, and after you hand in your report, you will be at, everyone will be assigned a peer review. And this is an obligatory part of uh, the course. So essentially, we'll get, you'll get all the dates very soon when we put out the schedule. But essentially, you hand in your report and it will be uh, the very last week and just a weekend before. Uh, and then you will all have about three days that you will have to read three other people's tutorials and give some feedback according to a grading system that we do have that will be more covered in a later video uh, and last week of the course and as this is the fifth week of the course uh, then everyone will do presentations and that is an obligatory part so everyone needs to do a presentation and you will all need to hand in a report that that and also the quizzes is the way that we grade you in this course. And there is a, um, a small uh, table here on um, uh, the complexity and such. Uh, and I would actually um, say that we do measure the amount of participation. So if you want to get a, a B a grade on this course, you should actually try to be active uh, an active participant in the course. That means that we do want to see you helping out other students and being active in workshops and such. So, but the most important part here is that if you want a higher grade than C, you need to discuss your project early on with a teaching assistant. And this is our vetting process for uh, being able to sort out the higher grades early on. That doesn't mean that you can't get an AB project if you have missed this part, but this is for us also being able to help you out. If you want A or B grade for this course, have that discussion early on with the TA and you will also 
get some pointers on what is required of you. Uh, so, and also it's a planning thing. The A and B projects, those are going to have a separate uh, track of presentations where we will um, actually make them a little bit more extended. Uh, so it's important that you early on raise a flag if you are into a higher grade than C because then it will help our planning on, on our end for everything. Also, if you do a A and B project, you uh, will get the additional bonus of being profiled uh, in the showcase of good examples from this course. Uh, so if you would like to be there, obviously you should aim for the A and B level of grade and you will be remembered of the in the hall of fame in the iot course uh, where all the uh, really good projects are and in order to get like the c grade uh, obviously you need to fulfill all the basic requirements and keep everything on on time and in more detail as i've already said we have here like to get an A level, you need to actually fulfill a lot of different things and the B level and so on. And I'm probably better to read that yourself rather than me speaking about it. But just to say that again, we will, if you want to aim for a high grade, please ask a teaching assistant uh, and book a meeting early on in the course. There are some more explanations on the complexity levels. Uh, I would actually try to not talk too much about them because uh, if there is anything that is unclear of what I have written here, please let me know. And in that case, I will try to make it more clear in the study guide. So this part should be, I would say, as clear as possible. But there is always a gray scale here when we're talking about projects and complexity it's not easy to be super objective so that's why we do want you to speak with the teaching assistant early on to sort of being able to align uh, our expectations with your expectations you will be able to find all the relevant planning on on the course webpage, and that is uh, the landing page uh, so the course summary here, you will be able to find uh, all the all the dates and time and everything for uh, what you need to put on your schedule. Uh, we will do all the workshops, uh, that is video workshops, video and sound. <laughs> they will happen on the Discord server. Uh, some uh, meetings might be a Zoom meeting and the majority of the lectures and recordings will be distributed via YouTube. So there will be a mix of different uh, tools, but the majority of things will happen on Discord and YouTube for this course. Yes, um, I would like also to mention that we will do have a weekly blog, video blog every week, and that will most likely happen on Fridays. That is how we have planned it at the moment. And I can mention that everything that is going to be distributed on, on YouTube or be recorded, even though it might be live, it's fine to watch that later on. You don't necessarily need to do it live. But the added benefit of watching it live is that you can interact. So we will open up a Discord server uh, channel, uh, channel in the Discord server for interaction during the live streams that we do uh, have. That was all about the summer course uh, study guide and some formal start of this. So see you very soon. Uh, we start at the 5th of June. Thank you.